It's the 1920s, and for many women, especially young, unmarried working ones living in big cities, the times are bringing greater financial independence. Combined with more open attitudes and having grown up through the war, meaning many are used to greater social independence, there developed something of a new type of woman. 1918 to 1933, the German New Woman. There is not perfect consensus on what exactly it means to be a new woman, but in general, the two key points are that they work a white-collar job, i.e. in an office or as a sales assistant, and that they consume a lot. They go out more than before, buy more clothes, expressing their independence through how they look, buy more makeup and cheap jewellery, revealing clothing, and they dress and act more masculine than women in the past. They have short hair, they smoke, drink and go out unaccompanied. They act in more modern ways, coming across less interested in marriage and families, and having a more liberal sexual attitude too. The image of this new woman is very popular in adverts, films and magazines, which is where many of these ideas come together. Her striking image is perfect for adverts, especially as her lifestyle is often seen as quite consumerist. Essentially, she buys a lot of stuff. Marketing is also able to lean into the idea that good looks are a great way to increase both your career and marriage opportunities in order to sell things. There is, however, also a lot of opposition to and backlash against so-called new women, mainly from men, who feel like women are encroaching upon their space, but also from many women too. There is a belief that the growing equality and independence of women threatens traditional society, and women's role in it as a mother and homemaker. They argue this in two key ways. Firstly, they argue that the falling birth rate is destabilising society. In 1913, there had been 27.5 live births per 1,000 women each year. By 1925, this number has fallen to 20.7. Many people believe that women need to be mothers for the proper functioning of society. Secondly, they argue that the divorce rate rising is also destabilising society. In 1913, there had been 26 divorces per 100,000 people each year, and by the 1920s, this has risen to 60 per 100,000. Many also believe that women need to be wives for the proper functioning of society. There is also backlash from older feminists against the new woman, who see these young women as irresponsible, taking for granted the freedom that they, the older women, have fought so hard to achieve for the younger ones. There is a divide, therefore, between people who welcome the limited improvements for women and those who are afraid of them. Some women feel liberated and others feel scared by the expectation that they should change. Some men accept the changing role of women, whilst others think that the changes are out of order, many even going as far as to feel that new women threaten the role of men in society. Conservatives, traditionalists and much of the clergy, church people, complain loudly that women are stepping out of line, disrupting male-dominated society, and that they should instead just focus on their jobs as wives and mothers. Some even go as far as to blame the economic instability in Germany in the 1920s on women, upsetting the labour market by stealing jobs from men. It's also worth mentioning that today, amongst historians, there's a big debate over whether or not the new woman actually really existed, or whether she was more of a symbol, either an advertising image or a symbol of everything modern, which could both be a good thing or a bad thing depending on who you ask. One of the key points made is that whilst lots of women started working in new traditionally masculine industries during the war, a lot of them also then quit these jobs afterwards. In 1907, 34.9% of women were employed. By 1925, this number had only gone up to 35.6%, a very small difference. Another point is that women in white-collar office jobs, the type of job seen as stereotypical of the new woman, also weren't paid particularly well, and generally couldn't afford to move out from living with their parents, and therefore couldn't actually afford to live the new woman lifestyle, even if they would have wanted to. Elements of the new woman's lifestyle did, however, definitely exist in Weimar society. She isn't completely made up. More the debate is whether or not there were actual people who lived the whole new woman lifestyle, and who should be counted as a new woman. How much of a new woman do they have to be in order to be one? That's a very brief summary, but if you're interested to learn a bit more, then I'll link some resources in the description. You don't need to know about this debate for GCSE, but I think it's irresponsible to just say there were loads of new women in Weimar, Germany, without even mentioning that historians aren't even sure if there were actually really very many new women, or how much these people lived up to their perceived new woman character. 1918 to 1933, the German new woman. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell all your friends! 
Might be a surprise that I'm back as I've been gone a while. I had a history degree to finish, which I've done now. Woo! And I've been saving up videos over the summer so that hopefully I can upload a little more consistently, at least for a bit. I'm going to attempt to get a new video out every two weeks this term. We'll see how long that lasts as I'm just about to move country to start a master's degree, but an attempt will be made. And if you want to follow what I get up to during this attempt, then I have joined the Twitter migration and can now be found on Blue Sky at a long long time ago dot See you very soon!